from AIT Studios in Abuja, Nigeria. This is the O and N Sunday Show with Obiora Ilo and Mamode Akuga. Well, this is your Sunday Show, the O and M Sunday Show. I am Obiora Ilo, and I have with me, as usual, Felix. Oh my God, I keep calling him Felix. Mamudi. That, that is unpardonable. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to a very, very beautiful uh, Sunday. And of course, um, a nice package we have for you today. Quite a lot is happening in Nigeria. The buzz is so much. Everybody is talking about the elections and the postponement of the elections. Today will have been the day for the presidential debate, but all that too has been affected, Obiora, by the postponement yesterday of the elections by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Well, that postponement has uh, attracted diverse reactions. There are some uh, saying, oh, why the postponement? There are others that are celebrating the postponement. I think the difference is in opinion uh, depends on, on uh, your own disposition, who you're supporting. It looks like those that are supporting the PDP are saying, oh, it's fine. Oh, they did it. We need more people to participate. We need to get it right. And those that are supporting the APC are saying, oh, they're taking advantage of our, you know, about our movement. Right. And uh, they, are, they, are, they are stopping. In fact, they, <laughs> don't, they don't like the idea. Yes. Uh, the initial reaction from the chairman of APC, John D. Diego, was to describe the situation as highly provocative. Yes. You know, um, and for the first time, uh, he had to sign the statement by himself. By himself. He didn't want any media uh, No, he didn't want any media <laughs> to, So, uh, but it was a very strong word. Yeah. Highly provocative. Yes. Now, Einek has said to the entire Nigeria that, look, nobody, uh, and uh, these are the right words of uh, Jaga, we were not forced. We were not coerced. We were not coerced into taking this decision. We take, these are not easy decisions to take but we have to take them and we stand by the decision. You know, um, you know apart from the security issues that are very, very serious, INEC itself had in-house problems with its contractors and vendors who did not deliver on the, the timelines that were also given to them. So INEC had its own problems in-house, which of course this postponement will now allow them to fine tune. So this is sweet relief for, yeah. for INEC. Uh, for, uh, yeah. But, but uh, Mahmoud, I think we should also commend uh, the language that was used by the APC leader. He has called on all Nigerians to be, to calm. be calm, peace, peaceful, uh, that everything will be sorted out in another three days uh -huh. or number of days. The APC will take a stand on the postponement. So we're also using the opportunity mm, because yeah. a lot well, of Nigerians will take advantage of this and say this person is upset and all that and maybe do some stupid things. Yes. So we're asking everybody to be calm. Uh, I, I, was, I was on Twitter this morning yeah. and someone say, we, want, we don't just want to see the elections, we want to see the country after the elections. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> correct. So, uh, and I don't know, a lot of people feel that, you know, a time... Uh, or a shift or it can affect the outcome. I don't know if that's, I don't anyway, know if that's anyway, exactly anyway, true. We, you know, Mamode, we have a know. team uh, in yeah. the studio with us we, today we'll, uh, that will be looking at all these issues. We'll be talking to the people at the Nigerian uh, election debate group, yeah. why they have postponed it. We'll be talking to some uh, senior advocates of Nigeria to know where the legal uh, Implication. implications of what has happened. Yeah. Um, but all that will be when we take this break and return. And when, uh, uh, taking the break, uh, we, are, we, we are looking at... Um, we should listen to, yes, we should we are, listen we to Professor Atahiru Jaga. Atahiru in Jaga. his own words to all Nigerians, talk again about the postponement, the postponement yes. of the elections. Yes. Don't go away. Consequently, the Commission has decided to reschedule the 2015 general elections thus. The national elections, i.e. presidential and national assembly, are now to hold on March 28, 2015. While the state elections, governorship and state assembly, are to hold on April 11, 2015. It should be noted that this rescheduling falls within the constitutional framework for the conduct of the elections, notably 
section 76 subsection 2 section 116 subsection 2 section 132 subsection 2 and section 178 subsection 2 see also section 25 of the electoral act 2010 as amended for the avoidance of doubt we will under no circumstances as a commission approve an arrangement that is not in line with the provisions of our laws. Our hope is that with this rescheduling, the security services will do their best to ensure that the security environment needed for safe and peaceful conduct of the 2015 elections is rapidly put in place. We in INEC reassure all Nigerians and indeed the international community of our commitment to do everything within the law and to conduct free, fair, credible, and peaceful elections. We call on the security agencies to honor their commitment to restore sufficient normalcy for elections to take place within the period of extension. We also call on Nigerians, political parties, candidates, and all other stakeholders to accept this decision in good faith and ensure the maintenance of peace. As for us in INEC, we will endeavor to use the period of the extension to keep on perfecting our systems and processes for the conduct of the best elections in Nigeria's history. In particular, we believe that we would resolve all outstanding issues related to non-collection of PVCs, which currently agitate the minds of many Nigerians. Finally, we wish to call on all Nigerians to accept our decision, which is taken in good faith and in the best interest of deepening democracy in our country. Professor Atahiru Jaga, uh, talking to all Nigerians and giving some explanation uh, why the uh, elections earlier scheduled for the 14th of February uh, and the 28th of February had to be moved uh, uh, to the 28th of March and of course the 11th of April 2015. Um, a lot of people still trying to digest uh, all the reasons are used for the postponement but it has come to stay. That is the man that is uh, legally empowered and constitutionally empowered to make that shift in date, and he has made it. Well, uh, Ubera, we're going to be talking to some of our guests. Yes, today. we have uh, a um, team that will be looking at the postponement. Um, we we have um, Benro Olaju Mibe. Benro is already in the studio. is a public commentator and um, someone who has. Uh, done a lot of monitoring of the electoral body and of course the, the, the electoral atmosphere in Nigeria. We also have um, Dr. Okemwa from the uh, PDP presidential campaign organization and we have Senator Sirica. Uh, senator is um, a serving senator of the All Progressive uh, Congress. They're already yes. seated um, and we'll be going back to them in a moment. Yes. We also, on the sofa later today, uh, one of uh, Nollywood greats, a uh, man who's been around for a while. Uh, you must have seen several of his movies. Um, hardly each day pass by on the African Magic uh, channels or on the different uh, cable channels you have that you would not see at least one movie of this guy. I'm talking about Francis Duru. Uh, I know you guys are seeing him on your screen now. We'll be having him later on, on the sofa. Yeah, um, um, uh, Mamode, we already have um, um, a Mekangege, senior advocate of Nigeria on the line. Um, um, Chief Mekangege, thanks for joining us. Hello. Uh, uh, well, uh, we will. Hello, Mekangege, are you with us? Are you with us? Hello. Okay, we'll get back. Uh, we'll, get, we'll go back to him in a moment. 
Um, but we also we are on the street this morning to gauge the feelings of Nigerians. Let's bring you a little of that uh, interaction with Nigerians on the street. I think if uh, the chairman of the commission, you know, insists that the security situation in the country is not conducive for credible polls, I think we should give them a benefit of doubt and uh, let them go ahead and postpone the elections. Though some Nigerians may not feel comfortable with it because uh, the security situation has been on for years now and we've not been able to tackle it as it is. I think it's a nice idea because the tension is uh, much in the country. When you look at the way people are going around about the election of the day, you understand that uh, shifting it is a bit better. The tension in the country now is very high, especially in Abuja here. Even though it's a federal capital territory, what we think that they, we are secure here, there is security here. But you see that people are still running out of the state, out of the capital here, to their various states or their various villages. I believe postponing the election is very good. And uh, because of uh, the security in the, in the system and in, in Abuja alone, so it's good. In fact, my brother, I'm surprised. We didn't expect Mr. President to go on that and the chief security. For this country, a great country in Africa, we didn't expect that this country can go beyond like this. In fact, not only me, everybody are angry about the postponement of the election. Here are some reactions uh, from the streets of Abuja uh, about the postponement uh, of the elections. Uh, that in effect has affected quite a lot today was supposed to be commencement of the presidential debates and we have with us uh, uh, on the line now uh, from the Nigerian elections debate group uh, Mr. Taiwo Alimi. Hello sir. Hello, how are you? Very well today sir. Um, you were supposed to have the uh, presidential debates uh, today. Uh, we understand that uh, You've moved that away from today. Why is that, sir? Thank you very much. Uh, but as a result of the postponement of the uh, election days by INEC, the Nigerian Elections Debate Group then in serious meeting today and then postponed the uh, debates, the presidential debates, as would be known, um, the Nigerian Legends Debate Group, NEDG, has a reputation built on integrity, trust, professionalism, and experience, and is towards making debate a permanent component of the democratic process and strengthening democracy in Nigeria. The debate is about that. Therefore, we believe that we should now be able to move the any DG presidential debates to uh, a period that will be near the uh, elections oh. so that people can then watch the debate. Several millions of Nigerians can watch the debates and be able to make informed choices not too long so that when they go to vote on voting day, they will be voting through, you know, informed yeah, choice. Yes, sir. And that's exactly why. Okay, sir. Um, would you be able to tell, give us an idea of uh, when did you, you did say it will come close, but uh, when and how soon will a date be officially announced uh, for the, the uh, presidential debates? Well, it will be, it will be uh, announced uh, we will before the end by the middle of this month. Okay. And also, as I said earlier, it will be scheduled for a period by the middle of March and the beginning of third week. Will, will you, will, sir, yeah, uh, will you be able to now use the opportunity of this time to try to get the APC candidate to participate? Will that be one of the uh, uh, fallouts, one of the things you will want to do with this uh, postponement? Essentially, it is because of the postponement of the debate by INEC, okay. not so much by us. But essentially, and for purposes of clarity, any DG is non-partisan, non-political, and independent. Okay. Therefore, they are 
moving from this week to contact all the political parties and all the presidential candidates that we have invited, all of them, including APC. Okay. They will be contacted, and they will have our letter and everything, and they will be invited again, and we have every hope that all the political parties, the presidential candidates, yes. including APC, will we'll attend positively. this. All right. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the O&M Show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And joining us from Lagos now is um, a Chief Emeka Ngige, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, uh, Chief Emeka Ngige, welcome to the o and uh, studios. Hello. Hello, Emeka Ngige. Okay. Um, we have already assembled a very formidable team uh, to look at um, the postponement of the elections. Uh, I did say earlier that um, we have um, Benro Olajumibe, he's here. Uh, we also have Dr. Okenwa, um, Senator uh, representing the APC will be with us in a moment. Gentlemen, can you join us now? Um, <laughs> okay, Ngu. <laughs> Welcome to our serious gentlemen. Welcome. Yeah, thank Hello. you. <laughs> well, um, you guys didn't arrive from the, arrive from the moon this morning. <laughs> so you've been in Nigeria and you've seen right. the different views about the... About the... Oh, uh, uh, Mekangige is joining us now. Uh, senior Advocate, you're welcome. Um, well, the, the INEC has postponed the elections, uh, and, that, and that was yesterday. Please, can you share with us the legal implications of this action by INEC? Are they within the law in postponing these elections? Sorry, can you come, can you come again? I said, is INEC within the law? Is the action of INEC within the laws of Nigeria? Are they within the law in postponing the elections? Talking legally. Okay, thank you. Uh, speaking legally, I meant was, uh, would I say, they were subverting the law. They were wrong within the law. The law was being subverted. Because uh, Section 26 1 of the Literal Act, which the chairman of INEC cited, dealt with a situation where there is natural emergency or threat to. Okay, uh, uh, when uh, 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 Professor Jagar was talking yesterday, he did also raise concerns about the fact that if you don't conduct elections in those areas, you might have an election that is inconclusive. Um, because the Nigerian, yes, I'm trying to find out something from you. Uh, the Constitution did say that for you to emerge president, you must uh, uh, score 25% uh, in two thirds of the 36 states and the FCT. So if you take away four states, um, how fair would that be if you were to have elections and then the elections will not be conclusive by May 29? Have you thought about that? Yes, ma'am, we are not talking about four states. In Adamawa, for instance, the number of local government areas under threat in Adamawa are 
Gigo, we must thank you for your insight. I mean, this is another angle to the whole debate. Uh, thanks for your insight. Um, gentlemen, um, uh, let's also welcome the uh, distinguished senator. Distinguished senator is here. Let's, 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 welcome, let's welcome him. Please join us, distinguished senator. Uh, we'll take a yes. break. Let's, yeah. take, let's, let's take a break and then we'll return with our our guests. It's still the O&M Sunday show. And uh, we're going to be kicking off our discussions now. But first, uh, Ubiore, we have uh, the senator uh, joining us now. Yeah, we have Senator Hadi Sirika joining us. Uh, S senator Sirika is an APC uh, senator. You're decorated with the APC. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> anywhere, any day. You don't want any mistakes. Uh, no, no. no, no. <laughs> well, Ben, well. let's start with you. Um, mm. I, like I was saying, you guys are in Nigeria. You've seen what happened between yesterday and now. What's your take on the postponement of the elections? Magic happened. It was a magic. Yeah, and the, 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 the submission was equally magical. For us to now begin to see where Leisman begin to dictate the pace of a match, even without deferring to the referee. To Who is the Leisman? The, the Leisman is the military. Why the, 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 the referee of the match is the Inek? Is Inek. Yes. So it, 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 it's, it's an insult on our history, the history of our past, the history of our experience. And not only that, it's a danger to our future too. Because when you have institutions of democracy being surrendered to the military that is expected to be subservient to such institution, it's an indicator of a danger. And the reason given is so appalling, is so childish. The reason given is that to enable the military to contain the 
urges of violence in the northeast within six weeks. What they have been battling in for, uh, uh, with in the past six years. No, but there's a new multinational force now. It doesn't this, matter. They say and let, they let me state that's this. Different from what let I've me been state this because I don't, I don't care the divide we belong to in Nigeria. Today it might sound right to you, but when you reflect on the past, where we are coming from, I think we are playing with fire. And, and I'm saying this with all sense of responsibility as a Nigerian that have gone through all this experience, the trauma that came with the military regime, the trauma that came with annulment of uh, June 12 election, and we are setting pace for the same thing. Okay, let Menge, me, Menge, let we'll me come back to we'll you. Come, come back to you. <laughs> we like, we like uh, Dr. Okengu uh, to weigh in on this. Um, do, do you think that what they describe as the situation has been childish? Well, I wouldn't know what situation he's describing. The situation of no, postponement hold on, hold on. of just, just, just hold on a minute. Because if you're describing what INEC legally okay, has a right to do, and INEC has said to you, we've consulted widely. INEC didn't say to you, somebody directed us to. Okay? INEC had gone to you know, the uh, Council of States meeting to make a presentation. And in this presentation that INEC made to the Council of States, you also made allusion to the security situation in the country. It's not as if, you know, the INEC chairman got into that meeting and came out and said, okay, I've been forced to do this. They were wide, according to what the INEC chairman read out yesterday, every Nigerian had it. But let us now, you know, begin to now deal with what we can call issues on ground. Do we have, right now, military campaigns going on in the areas under review? or the areas that have now occasioned this extension and not postponement. Because when you're talking about postponement, postponement will now say, okay, let us think about a new date. All you have just simply done is to be able to place a new date, to extend to a new date, where INEC says, okay, fine, based on what you and I don't know, based on what's beyond us. Doctor, okay? please enlighten us. What's the difference between extension and postponement? You see, postponement can be indefinite. Usually you use the word, postponement can be indefinite. But it's when all about is, extension. It's, it's all about, okay, instead of doing it today, let's do it the, 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 the other day. Just the, 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 the first and foremost, what is sacrosanct? <laughs> and what Nigerians must find as sacrosanct is that May 29 is sacrosanct. Yeah, constitutionally. Okay? Constitutionally. You can't move, that you can't move it. Yeah. So when people now start playing around, dancing around words, you know, they, it begins to get you worried. Because the, the new date that has been in place, and first and foremost, I think we need to ask these questions. You know, why would anybody be worried? What does it benefit anybody that now, the elections are not postponed? Dr. Okay, you, you said something earlier. You raised the question which you did not answer, and I think you know the answer to yes. that question. Yes. I mean, just for enlightenment, we're journalists, we stand on facts. Yes. Uh, you talked about, uh, you asked the question whether a campaign was going on. Yes. Uh, when uh, Barry was talking earlier on, I reminded him, because it's just facts, yes. that the multinational force, I mean, that's what we are told, we are not there, they say the multinational force is uh, getting ready to take on. It's not there. Uh, uh, so what would, it, what would it benefit? So you no, asked. No, no, you asked. Yes. You I, asked I, I, no, the, the, I, I think you know the answer. The answer is the question. That's what I just asked. I mean, Nigerians, don't we know that the military has a campaign in those states, in the states of Adamawa, in the states of Borono, and you talked about the multinational air force, and we are seeing these results. Okay. Let's, 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 has been running commentary on no, this. Don't worry, we'll come back to you. Uh, <laughs> we'll go to uh, <laughs> Senator Sirica. Uh, INEC says they consulted widely. All the political All parties. All the political parties. And I remember that at that same ev uh, event, someone asked, did you consult the National Assembly? But let me leave the National Assembly. You were a very top-ranking member of the APC. Was your party consulted sufficiently? Well, in the first instance, um, I have to say that whatever I would say in this... Um, uh, forum, it's my own opinion, a personal opinion. It's not the opinion of my party. In this matter, uh, my party, I'm not aware whether they have taken a decision. And if they do, you people will be the first to know um, the press. Uh, as far as consultation is concerned, um, I haven't been consulted as a member of uh, APC in the Senate, caucus. Uh, neither am I aware or privy to any consultation. But I did know that the meeting. Uh, there was a meeting uh, between INEC and political parties of which my party was there and represented. Um, the details of the meeting I did not attend, so I wouldn't know. 
that's the answer to, to your question whether we have been consulted. But on, on a personal level, mm -hmm. how do you how how do you react to this entire situation of uh, a postpone or uh, well uh, maybe <laughs> extension? I don't know <laughs> postponement or whatever it is. How do you react to well, it? Well, whatever the semantics are, I mean, I want <laughs> to first to disagree with my brother here that um, the issue of the linesman that the military being linesmen in this game. I think the military is very clear they have no role to play in elections, um, as uh, going by the judgment. Um, so they can't be linesmen. Linesman is as good as referee, because when he raised the flag, it ought to be obeyed. Mm -hmm. That is my first take, and it's my personal opinion. Secondly, what is at stake? We have 774 local governments, out of which 14 are having issues bordering on security and the military need to undertake um, a program or a campaign or a war in those 14 local governments out of 774. And I want to believe, and it's my take, that 14 out of 774 will not substantially affect the outcome of the result of an election that is presidential. And secondly, even at that, why did the military choose this 14th of February, which has been so christened February, because of the way that it has turned out that the country has shifted to one side in the election? Um, this date was not given yesterday. Neither was it given a month ago or two months or even six months. It's been so announced long time ago that there will be an election on the 14th of February. And the military cleverly decided after they have sent their national security advisor to go to London and start talking about this issue. Yes. And then they come back to perfect the plan to shift the election or postpone the election or readjust the election, whatever semantics my brother wants to use, you know, to another date when it is just less than a week to that day. You know, I think it's appalling. I think it's unfortunate. I think it's anti-democracy. I think this is anti-people. This is my view. Oh. I think so much has been, I mean, you need to be a politician to know the pr level of preparations that people make to sell themselves to come out and stand for election. Okay. It's not uh, one day, sir. Okay. It's not, no, this, I'm making this a point. Is Senator, sorry. Uh, we'll come back we, to we are coming Senator. back to you. We are being joined from, the, from New York and the United States by um, uh, a very, uh, very accomplished journalist. He's also the director of the Center for Media in New York, uh, Dr. Uchenna Eko. Dr. Uchenna Eko, you, 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 you had a, an article in Al Jazeera which was um, um, uh, carried by many other uh, uh, newspapers and, and, and uh, uh, magazines in the United States. And the focus of that was that Nigeria should um, uh, move forward the election date. Why did you take that position? Thank you so much. The reason for the article, actually, the reasons are so many, but uh, in summary, um, it does appear that uh, Nigeria is not prepared for the election. A situation where almost half of the electorate with different franchise actually uh, it's unacceptable and uh, the outcome of that election was going to be questionable. And most importantly, uh, the first document made in that article was the fact that uh, within the two leading candidates, uh, in my judgment, uh, will not be a solution to Nigeria. Given the fact that uh, the current president has really demonstrated uh, some measure of uh, weakness in terms of uh, addressing the security challenges of that country. Okay, uh, Dr. 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 Ekwo, Dr. Ekwo, you also went ahead in that article to suggest that the current administration should hand over to the National Assembly so that new representatives of the parties will come up and be elected for the presidency. That is unconstitutional. Well, it's not unconstitutional in the sense that uh, uh, this is going to require different remedies. What Nigeria needs is a kind of disruption. And if you observe a trend in innovation, for something to happen, there has to be a, 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 a disruption.
instruction with the with the we cannot continue to be doing things the way we have been doing it and uh, expect uh, to have a different result. Um and I thought I said that uh, somehow those people who continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, that is the definition of insanity. Nigeria has to introduce some major radical reforms, radical changes that can only really alter the equilibrium for the country to move forward. We cannot continue to recycle people, you know, to think about this all the time. Oh, okay. So what I'm saying is that, and again, also, there are lots of young, bright people in the country. Nigeria is, you know, endowed with a lot of entrepreneurial men and women, very far sighted young men who can really drive the country to a different direction. The country cannot continue to do things the way that they did it and they think that the country can change. It's impossible. Okay, okay. Dr. Equo, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Equo, Director for Media. Uh, sent for the, for media for the Center for Media and Peace Initiative in New York. It's been nice speaking with you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. At this point, uh, let's allow uh, Senator Hardy to round yes. up. Yes. What he was saying. Well, yes. I was just trying to say that um, assuming that um, uh, we even take the military for what they said, if what is said that they wrote a letter that in the first instance is six weeks, it means there could be another instance. You know, people are beginning to doubt. People are beginning to disbelieve in all of this. They are seeing it as correct. They are seeing it as a cook-up things, you know. But um, are they saying that if Nigeria is now attacked, this is a one-day operation. The, the election is just one day, 14th and 28th. Yeah. Now, if they can't or they are not ready, assuming they even have a role to play, they are not ready to play that role in one day, which means that when Nigeria is attacked, they are not ready. If the entire nation, 923,000 square kilometers of land is attacked, they're not ready. We rely on them. We rely on them. All right. Uh, maybe we should, uh, Miro, yeah. um, express very strong sentiments against this uh, postponement. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I wanted to, you know, it's, it's not like it's unusual. It's not like it has not happened in the past. Um, I mean, the last elections, we try to run ahead and have the elections. At the end of the day, Jaga uh, could not kickstart it, and he had to postpone it. Now, while talking yesterday, he didn't completely say that it was all about security. Yeah. He also said that there were failures from their vendors, people who had contracts to execute. They gave them deadlines you know, for them to be able to go ahead with uh, the elections. And he clearly told us yesterday that these contractors failed to meet the deadlines. So they also have huge internal problems in INEP, which also made it impossible for them to, to say, okay, we are ready 100%. I don't even want to talk about PVCs and yeah. all that. So there were other issues. I don't know if you considered all that at all. Yeah, yes, I listened to Professor Jekka yesterday. No human institution is perfect. We can never be 100% perfect, even in the studio, your arrangement and every other thing, as small as it is. Yes. Not to talk of managing the, uh, elect, the uh, national election for the whole country. We don't, I, I was not expecting perfection from Jaga. And he, he, he highlighted the level of, uh, 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 of preparedness. In fact, Jaga emphasized yesterday that the ANEC was ready for the election. But the security of people, of ballot papers, of uh, uh, logistics generally, yes. is danger, it's endangered. And that is why he made that statement. The, the, the statement of Professor Jaga was contextual within those other things, because he emphasized that even though ANEC is ready for the election, without input from other stakeholders, it will be hardly possible for INEC to go on with the election. Okay. And let me equally add this. It does not lie within the purview of the military to determine the date of election, whether election will be conducted or not. And that is one take I want us to get here. Yeah. That the responsibility, you know, you excluded the most critical part. When uh, uh, V. Martin was asking the question whether the stakeholder, critical stakeholders were consulted. The most critical stakeholders in democracy is the people who has invested their emotion, who has invested their hope, 
who, who, who was rejoicing at the actualization of their rights, exercising their right to make a change when possible, where, if possible, or retain the sitting president, yes. if desirable. So they were not this, consulted? They were not consulted. Okay. They, it came to, okay. Uh, um, okay. okay. Let, let's go to uh, doctor. Doctor, that the military is not ready, that Boko Haram are celebrating, because whether we like it or not, they are the reason why the elections it's are being postponed. It looks like a victory for Boko Haram. This, I mean, it's victory for Boko Haram. Is it not an indictment on the government of Goodluck Jonathan and the government of the PDP? How could this be an indictment, Martin? How could this be an indictment? Why would it be an indictment? What is it then? If okay. it's not an indictment, now, what is it? What it is you have is that you have a military that says, we are carrying out campaigns. All of us see these campaigns. They are running documentaries. You have a military that says, we are a little better equipped, we are a little better prepared, okay? We are a little bit more organized. No, we are not dealing with what we are trained to do. The military is not trained to carry out asymmetrical wars. This is not a conventional war. So six weeks it, after, if no, they yeah, don't end please, this thing, no, can please. we extend, you see, you see, extend you see, the Senate, more? The senator said something, first and foremost, and Barry also mentioned it, that it's all about the Nigerian people. It's all about citizens. The same citizens that, uh, that, that Benga says was not consultant have been in the streets. Some poor, some against. You've had, you know, people marching all over Nigeria saying, you know, please for our sakes, extend these elections so that the proper things can be done. There are a lot of issues about this election. First and foremost, you're talking about the IDPs, the internal displaced persons. Some of them are in camps, most of them are not. Okay? You're talking about the card readers, that you have just this is a new technology you have, you have brought in. And all these things, Anek has said to you, we are not asking for anything that is outside the law. But what should be of some interest here is to, to actually ask, you know, is there anything out of the ordinary? Who is interested in these elections not being, not being you know, done right? <laughs> because, you see, if everybody is saying, let's do the right thing, I mean, what is so sacrosanct about the 14th? First and foremost, Anek has said to you, the man read out like five or six sessions of a letter out that empowered him to do what it is he had done. But the senior advocate says he's in, in breach. The senior advocate that said so lives in Lagos, I guess. And probably when he's talking about 14 local governments, what you understand about a military push is that the 14 local governments will just be the way you're going to end it. Meaning that when the people now run out of one of those local governments into another local government or into another area, then it's no longer a war. You see, when people talk, I think we should be, we should be a little bit more compassionate. You know, these areas you're talking about are areas that have Nigerians no, and have fundamental rights uh, to also vote. The last, okay, the last let's, let's, let's do the last one. Um, <laughs> Senator, the APC seems to be very worried about the postponement of the elections. Um, is it that you people feel that um, maybe if the elections were done on the 14th, you would win, and if, you, if they move it, you are likely to lose? Is that the real worry? Well, I think uh, for very good reason, APC needs to be worried, not because we will lose the election. If you postpone it a million times, a million times we will win. It's been so clear. This election is won and lost already. I mean, if you are Nigerians, you do know so. Um, but the point here is, here you are dealing with people who are never people of their words. They will say one thing and do another. It's a source of worry. That is what number one. Number two, a lot has been committed. We've been, our presidential candidate has been to 34 out of 36 states of the Federation. He's held town hall meetings. He done rallies. He done campaigns. And mind you, we're not funded by government. Uh, and and uh, this costs money. Yeah, it costs a lot of money. It costs time. It costs resources and hope and vision, you know. And uh, we have ideas. And we are eager to come and present this change to Nigerians. And then take over. And, and, and take over and do the right thing. And do the right thing. And do the right thing. No, oh, no, for no, sure. No, oh, for sure. No, oh, for sure. No, oh, for sure. No, oh, for sure. No, and no, let, no, let me make this point. Oh, let me make this point, please. Oh, right. Let me make this point. Now, because we need um, to get to go. One is talking yes. about um, um, militarization, or one is talking about the war. Afghanistan has done election, and they're in war time. It's not the only country. Iraq. Yeah, What's Iraq. Their population? And so, so, what is the so, land uh, area? so, so for me, what so are for, the area? So for me, so for me, 14 <laughs> out of 774. My dear brother, on no matter how the military, and the military is only aware, and the military, the military is only aware today, yesterday. Sorry, just just this one last line. Let us let us. The last line. The last line is that in one of the media chats, presidential chat, the president said, "Well, it was us." 
why did you travel when there was a bomb blast in your country? He said the day he failed to do what he's expected to do as a president. Because of bomb blast. Because of bomb blast. That means that Boko Haram has succeeded. Let's but I'm, I'm also, also, I'm also, if he's he saying that, I'm also saying that. And the military is just knowing, the military is just <laughs> knowing that the, the authorship, the election. Thank you so much. Please, uh, please, 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 please. I'm going to keep with a lot of pride. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is for coming on to our program. My brother, how are you? You have to proceed elegantly, I believe. You don't need to just proceed elegantly. You know, you know, Senator, I think AP is actually living a dream. No, it's not. No, you're, you're, li you're, living, you're living a dream. Well, we're living a dream, <laughs> we no, shall see. No, you're living a dream. It's not a dream. In Nigeria, nothing is happening. Nothing is working. Nothing is making sense. When I look in Nigeria, I see the economy is growing. Young people have better opportunities. The farmers are rejoicing. Transportation is getting better and better. The roads are better than they have been in a long, long time. So why are they lying? Why are they covering the truth? Where is the integrity? Where is the patriotism? Maybe that's why they don't want to debate. People, think about the truth. Think Nigeria. Vote. Good luck, Jonathan, for president. This message is brought to you by Wind of Hope. Lock Jonathan for president. Vote PDP. This message is brought to you by Directorate of Media and Publicity, PDP Presidential. And now joining us on the sofa, one of Nollywood greats, Mr. Francis Doro. <coughs> <sighs> My boss. <laughs> Good to have you, man. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, sometimes this politics is something. Uh, it's good. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, almost taking over our entire program today. Yeah, it's good. It, it's, it, it's a period. We have, it's a season, rather. Yes. Yeah. So what is Nollywood thinking about the postponement? I don't want to say Nollywood personally. I think we all have our individual uh, opinions to this. And uh, for me, I think it's... Uh, divinely answered the postponement, the, the postponement to be to be candid it's it's uh, it's divinely answered because to me i think it's a total disservice to the military for what they have been doing so far and we begin to put the blame on the military it is totally wrong it says you travel you see this young men and women they're nigerians they have a family they're out there Walking for you and I, sleepless night, the rainfall is there. And because we have a military that is pro democracy and we don't respect that, we don't respect the power of the military, we don't respect the work, the energy, the devotions, the energies put in place, I think it's really wrong. It is unpatriotic. If the military says, sorry, we are on a campaign in this area. It's all about caution. And to me, I think it's a coincidence because they've been fighting for some time. Boko Haram is not just something you just wake up and fight. You try this, it fails. You try this, it fails. And for once, they have these other bodies coming together. Coincidentally, it's falling within the period for the yes. election. So if they say, ah, give us six weeks, give us six weeks. we are doing something. It means they're avoiding collateral damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
which means they don't want a situation whereby at the end of the people day become the people because because if they do this now the same people who are crying why military say ah, ah why did the military go to do that when election, election was on uh, Mamadi, yeah. we have to be careful. Yeah. We are even, <laughs> we're still talking politics. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, sir, and sir, we need to talk about Francis. No, sir, sir. Francis, is that not a smart no, way sir, to sir. keep us from talking about No, sir, we, we need to talk about politics. Yeah, yeah, because as, as an actress, I'm, yeah, yeah. In, uh, no, politics. Sir, sir, I serve bit. politics. Beyond that, I'm a citizen of Nigeria, and we must talk politics. You okay. know? Because if you ask me, sir, the major things, we have not talked about eventualities. A card reader, a PVC, Behind your PVC, nobody has said anything how you protect your PVC. Your, your key to your hotel oh, room. How you ensure that how you, you ensure get your PVC. PVC yeah. Because you, you are from the east. Yeah. And your people are the worst heat. My father has not gotten. Uh, PVCs. My father has not gotten. My mother has not gotten. My father keeps asking me, who are we voting for? I say, have you gotten your PVC? And the man just survived stroke. How does he get to the local government to get his PVC? And people are not saying that out of 774 local governments, say 14 persons can be dismissed, and you say we're in democracy, then where is the pro people thing we are talking about? Anyway, so, <laughs> so you think we should, we, should, we should give them this time? No, they, uh, they, and, they, and the country won't. Uh, yeah, but let them do the things they're supposed to do, especially INEC. People don't have PVCs. PVCs, you bring card readers. What if these card readers don't work? You, you are ATM machine, you go to your bank to even get money. The thing uh, retracts. And you travel outside, it refuses to pay you. You want to open your, your hotel room with your card. You can't have access because it's a combat. Let us activate it. They say, why? Maybe your phone, the, the magnetic, you know. Report, yeah. And these are things happening. Okay. 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 Let, let's, let's come to Nollywood. <laughs> <Let's come. laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just wonder, or maybe I'm, we should just uh, continue talking politics uh, and invite him uh, some uh, other uh, day to uh, talk. Uh, now, talk, okay, talk. Let's talk this politics uh, because <laughs> people are, see, so, so there's so much, you know, People are really looking for, uh, waiting for okay. people to tell them what to no, do. No, but Francis, what is this new uh, enthusiasm in Nollywood about politics? politics. Your well, colleagues are even your, going to campaign. Yes, uh, yes, some of, the, yes, some of them are openly taking sides. And contesting. We, we, yes, and have, contesting we, we, we have a space we, that has been more or less, uh, we have a vacuum. I, so with due respect, I thank God for it. I have more than 80 million fan base. What am I doing with it? They need to hear me talk. They need some guidance. I have young men and women I mentor in the church, family worship center where I worship. They need to, be, they, they need to hear me. They need to say, what are we going to, to do? do? What is the next level? People call us still today. This, will not, this politics will happen, what will not they think? So we need to be on top because we are social are commentators. Yeah, yeah, we are role models. We, we, we mold the opinion of people. When we say things, people, you know, listen to us. Conflict, I've had situations where people are fighting, sir. Boys want to kill them. So I say, my guys, wait it. Ah, bro, if not be saying, are you? Do I have weapons? No, but there's something in me that connects with his side that says, ah, if he says it's wrong. So we can't run away from it. We have come to be. So when they yeah. talk to you, Francis, yes, sir. what kind of leader do you tell them we need at this time? I tell them we need a leader that will transform this nation. We need a leader that will bring a new hope, new dreams, new Nigeria, away from the debris of yesterday. We need a, 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 a new thinking, total reorientation from uh, pedestrian politics where people are selfish. You know, you talk politics because it affects you. You defect to another party, not because of ideology, but because of your selfish interest. And you begin to, like, you know, cover that selfish interest and pretend as if you are representing the people. Meanwhile, you are talking about your own personal belief. <laughs> the day it does not work for you over about there, the, you switch. It, 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 to another, and you yeah. say you are representing me. I don't think so. We need leaders who will tell the truth. 
We need leaders who will be realistic. This is what I have done. This is what I intend to do. Judge me from what I have done and look at what I'm going to do. Mamode. I'm not perfect. Yes. I think this, that's this might be part one. This is part one. I think <laughs> Francis, we, have <laughs> <laughs> we have to no, come back on Tuesday. We have to come back. No, no, no. no. And then, Francis, is, it, is, uh, your, is your Tuesday free, Tuesday night? It's free for you, sir. Okay. So, so you have to come back you on have Tuesday. To come no back. Problem, and sir. I think that we have, we have to accept that we have to accept that we lost out as professional journalists we lost out today uh, to Francis because this is, is not, this is this not, not why we invited him. Then. He turned it <laughs> against us uh, completely and uh, we had no option that not to follow him. So yeah, but it's exciting. Uh, yes, it's exciting. I mean, it's exciting to I see people like him talk like this. A lot of people want to. So we, we have so our way. Yes. We'll, we'll, you're coming back on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. No problem. It's already and, and let me also appreciate this wonderful, you know. <laughs> when I see your billboard, I say, wow. You know, <laughs> I know these people, they say, nah, lie. You don't know them. <laughs> Well, I mean, my, uh, my I'm one of your biggest fans. No, no, no. Just <laughs> when I was running out of the house, I, I didn't see the title of the movie, the and I was just crisscrossing the channels. I saw, I was just, you know, stumbled on one of your movies. Uh, uh, they're showing it, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, or somebody was going to get married to an oracle. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you so much. Tuesday. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless. Uh, Mamode, I don't know. We have to do something about this. Yes, we, we definitely. We allow the Francis take uh, take it out of us. No, I think that uh, <laughs> uh, as uh, the former uh, president of Uganda will say, uh, on Tuesday we will retaliate. I think that's where we leave uh, leave it today. Don't forget, you can watch this program that we just just concluding, uh, or any of our programs on our online portal, our online TV, hblnews.com. You can also watch the full press conference of uh, Jega on our portal, plus many other developing stories around the world. I'm Obiora Ailo from Abuja, Nigeria. And I'm Mamode Akuga. Thank you so much for watching. See you Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Bye for now.